Hello, my name is Suzanne Johnson. I'm a therapist in Clinton Township. However, this video is separate from my private practice. Uh, although partly I made this for clients or anyone else that could help because I think that art is underutilized as far as how it can help you relax, express yourself and heal from trauma. Uh, so I want to show you some things that I've learned and tried. I first recommend you wear clothing. You don't mind getting paint on, which I'm doing here. And uh, as far as possible, do not judge yourself or compare yourself to other people or try to make it a certain way. Just, just let it come out. Just put the, the brush across the paper, the pen across the paper. I, um, in 1992, was recommended to go to art therapy group. And I remember the art therapist, she said, just let your hand do what it wants. Look at, just pick the colors that you feel drawn to and let your hand take over from there, which was very different from what I was used to doing, thinking a lot, figuring things out, just, just uh, letting it happen. And I found it very therapeutic. So um, some materials that you could use, if watercolor is a interesting medium, there's a lot of videos how to use watercolor. And this is a little set that Windsor and Newton makes. It's a student set, but it still has good quality colors, 14 colors for right now. Um, I looked it up, $25.13. Uh, for acrylic paint, which can be, it's easy to clean and it can be, has a, a, it's easy to use. I might recommend the Nova co color brand. I mean, there's less expensive brands like Art, Art, Craft Arts, they can work too. The Nova has really good saturation. Um, they have the four ounce size. I, I'm not an affiliate or anything, four ounce, 16 ounce. I found out about it from Betty Franks, the artist. But it's interesting, depending on how, some colors are much more expensive than others. For instance, Ultramarine is 4.99 for four ounces and 1049 a pint, so that's pretty good. Ultramarine blue, it's a darker blue, but cobalt blue, which I've got here, is $16.99 for four ounces and $39.49 for a pint. So you might want to stick with ultramarine. You can do a lot. You can mix with these three colors, uh, the ultramarine blue, a pyro red, and cadmium yellow, just about any color you need. Uh, well, you you might want to buy, you would want to buy some white and black too. So that's my tip on paint. And for brushes, uh, I found this set. It's golden, golden maple artist brushes, and they've got sizes two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. And that's like seventeen ninety nine, and it's sable brushes. So they work well for uh, watercolor and acrylic. Uh, next, um, when I first started uh, using doing uh, art therapy, uh, one of the things that I was introduced to was oil pastels. And here's a set that you can find on Amazon. It's like $9 for 50 colors. And they're, I like them because they're really vibrant and you can draw with them and you can blend them together. They, they do, it does get off on your hand. It is kind of messy uh, in that way. So, but a friend of mine, uh, she said she bought Mungio, Mungio chalk. They call it Mungio, Mungio chalk pastels. They're 64 pack. They're probably small for 1045. She says that's a lot easier because this, you have to, this kind of material, uh, you have to press down pretty hard to get that vibrant color. Uh, then uh, some people like colored pencils, and I bought them. I thought, well, they would be so neat that, that they're dry. You could just take them and do them anywhere, and they're not that expensive. But uh, myself, I find that they didn't have the vibrant color that I liked. I had to press down really hard. Uh, but some people like them because you, got, you have a lot of control with them. And some people, some artists make really beautiful art with uh, color pencils. So it's up to preference. Um, for what you paint on, I'd recommend like buying a mixed media paper. If Strathmore has some. And this one is um, 184 pounds. 
And the nice thing, if you get a big size like this, you can just cut it into small pieces. And uh, what I do is I just sometimes cover it, paint over it with a white paint from the hardware store, and that gives it a surface. So it's almost like uh, a canvas in terms of you can just paint on it without worrying about it soaking into the paper too much. Although this kind of paper is made for wet and dry media, even without coating it with the white paint. Uh, like here's a smaller, here's where I cut some out and just painted a little white or orange on it. And I, it makes it nice and thick. Okay, um, next. So uh, the first, one of the things I tried a couple of years ago, maybe you've heard of it, is acrylic pouring. And you pour paint in a cup and you pour some other medium like glue and you stir it all around and you, then you pour it on different surfaces. And it can be fun. It, it takes more skill than I thought it would. Uh, so, but I'll show you some of the things I've done with it. I, I made a little art trading card using the acrylic pouring. I poured on light fixture and, oh, here's another art trading card. And uh, I had my dad cut some cheap wood for me. And then I painted over that. Eight, to eight by 10 inch, so it can fit in a frame. Uh, this is one that I liked how it came out. Some I didn't like, but the nice thing about it is you can just repaint over them if you don't like them. Uh, and you can, I bought like a base from the hardware store, or, I mean the resale store for a dollar. And then I did poured acrylic pouring on it, made it really pretty. And I bought some um, ornaments from the resale store and I made some pretty uh, acrylic pouring with that. So that's something you might wanna try. It, it can take quite a bit of practice. Uh, the next thing uh, that's pretty easy, doesn't require much skill is uh, abstract palette knife paintings. And uh, on YouTube, I found some simple instruction how to do it and you like, Pour, pour this color paint here and this here, and then swipe it this way and swipe it this way. And so this is what I ended up with uh, my first attempt. So this is a palette knife, if you're not familiar with them. They're, they don't cost that much from the art store. Uh, that's one, and uh, this is another one. So it takes quite a bit of paint though. So that's fun. Uh, next, uh, you can make jewelry. I bought uh, little pieces of glass from the Home Depot. I guess people use it to line up their bathrooms with, but what I did is I painted on them. Well, I got, this one is like a little dried flower and then some alcohol ink. And this one, I just painted, I put a little heart there and uh, alcohol ink and then clear, some clear acrylic finish. This one is dried flower and I painted a little, Ladybug, and you can buy, actually you can buy these little things and um, the glass comes separate. Out, uh, uh, you glue the backing to the glass. So I painted on the backing and I made, and then the, 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 this comes with it. So then you can just need a little chain. Oh, this is a little sample of what, uh, I cut out one of my acrylic pouring paintings and made it into a piece of jewelry. So there's all kinds of things you can do to make your own jewelry. The next, you can uh, paint on clothing. This does require more skill, I think, to get it to look good. Although what I did was, um, here, this is, I think, one of the first ones I did. I found on YouTube how to do it, and it wasn't that hard. Of course, of course, I've done a lot of painting, but um, you might just experiment with some rags and want to try that. But if you do want to paint on clothing, you buy a uh, textile medium and just mix it in with your um, acrylic paints and it, it works. Uh, just recently I painted uh, on the back of a t-shirt flower. Now t-shirts are kind of a hard surface to paint on. Uh, um, I recommend jeans. Jeans are, this is a jean material. Jeans is more smooth, so it's easier to paint on. And another thing I tried is I, I bought this bag from the resale store. It looked like no one had used it and I painted on it. 
So something unique that no one else would have if you do something like this. Uh, next, you can make art trading cards. This was started in Europe where people made these little paintings, two and a half by three and a half inch size, and they traded with each other. And so more people are doing this. So I was doing this for quite a while. Um, this is my, my first one, a little snowman. And uh, this is just an idea I got. Someone painted and showed how to do this little bird on YouTube. And here's a simple flower one. So, so uh, eventually I, got, I had a couple stacks of them. <laughs> you can buy like cases. Oh, this is this one I didn't do. I bought this one off eBay, which I thought was really pretty. Uh, but you can buy uh, plastic cases to keep them from getting dirty. So that's fun to give as gifts, uh, trade with people. Uh, next, I want to tell you, uh, Betty Franks is one of my favorite abstract artists. And so I've tried to paint uh, like she does. I, I'm going to have to practice some more. But um, she shows how to make marks and just freehand scribble at first and do some black. And so I just wanted to show you what I did, kind of what she was trying to from watching her videos. Uh, this is a little five by seven inch one. And this is a five by seven inch one. This is 18 inch by 24. So I think it's kind of busy. But again, you know, but the important thing is not to judge it, just to have fun. Oh, and along with acrylic pouring, sometimes I just poured paint on some food wrapping paper I bought years ago for art therapy, and then I spatter paint. And this turns out to be really uh, unusual, uh, beautiful wrapping paper. Here's an example of a scrap paper, excuse me, excuse the cat, scrap paper. And uh, here's one that's a uh, painting that I was, I'm going to give away. So that's really easy to do. You just paint the surface and then just fling paint with it. Just fling like this. And it's fun to do with it. So people like the unique wrapping paper. Uh, okay, let's see. What else do I have here? Um, oh, you can make signs to encourage yourself. And then, you know, just tape them up on the refrigerator or the wall. And this is one I made. That was a quote that I really liked. It says, only good lies before me. I don't know if, you, if it's backwards, but. Uh, so and years ago when I was doing this kind of thing, I, I made one uh, drawing that says, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And the, you want to be right is the unhappy guy. And you want to be happy is the happy bear. So yeah, sometimes it helps to remind yourself of these things. Uh, but um, art therapy is, I think, one of the most beneficial ways of painting, just to express your feelings. And I'm going to show you a few samples. And then I'm going to have another video where I'm going to have a, quite a few samples, maybe 30 or 40 examples of art therapy. You can just do it all different ways. Collage, I wish I'd had an example of that. That's a very useful way, just cutting out pictures and taping them to a bigger uh, piece of paper with words, writing words or from the magazines. Okay, so here, remember I talked about the oil pastel. So here's an example of uh, art therapy using oil pastel. So you can see it's nice bright color, yeah, but there's some blending. Or I, di I didn't mention this, but actually magic marker is nice because you don't have to press hard. Uh, so, and it's not that expensive. Here's an example of art therapy using magic marker. Now, sometimes you can do not just you know, maybe get out the anger and unhappy feelings, but you can do art therapy and do something that you feel is beautiful colors to cheer yourself up. And that's what that's what I did with this one. This is uh, oil pastel. 
And then I put a clear acrylic uh, medium over it, which I probably bought from the hardware store. And here's another example of just art therapy. Just getting the paper, uh, paint on paper. You don't have to know what it means, but I can assure you it's relaxing. Years ago, I had really bad insomnia and I would paint every night uh, for an hour and then I would just feel so relaxed, so I'd go right to sleep. So those are my ideas for you. If you have any ideas that I haven't mentioned, please list them below. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video.